All right. I promised to return, and I have. So there's a couple of things that you need to know about. There was a lot of push after Sandy Hook, or Sandy uh, in Connecticut, to disarm the American population. No, it's not about your children. They don't really care. You have to realize how you're viewed. You are merely fodder, and you are a resource for the oligarchy in charge. This is the 535 members of Congress, the couple of hundred people that are tied immediately to the executive office, and the few hundred people that run the judicial system, including the nine Supreme Court black robes. It's also a small contingent of maybe another thousand people that run the administrative agencies that for all intents and purposes pass all the laws. Did you know that Congress only passed about, I don't know, what was it, 300 laws in uh, 2012? Yet the administrative agencies passed well over 6,000. Well, they're not laws, say the liberals, say the progressives, say the government defenders, the government apologists. They are laws. They carry the capability and the wherewithal to imprison you, to fine you, to put you out of business, to put you behind bars on a personal level, to restrict your access to trade, there are laws. If it walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, has webbed feet, wiggles its tail, it's a duck. They act and parade about as a rule and a regulation, but they are in reality law. And they're executed... And you're held accountable by administrative law judges who bar your ability to even have your, um, your right, your constitutionally guaranteed right, to a jury trial. Go before an administrative law judge that represents the BLM or the, or, or the, the USDA or I mean, pick any one of 100 agencies. Pick any one of 1,000 agencies. You don't have a jury trial. You are heard by an administrative law judge who actually works for the agency or owes at least a base minimum, owes his allegiance to the agency because that's where his livelihood comes from. And more often than not, he hears those cases in that given circuit or district or region or whatever the, whatever the geography uh, is. Now, we have a lot of rogue agencies in the country. EPA is one of them, completely, totally, and utterly out of control. But they're not the only one. The ATF, which, when held up against the Second Amendment, is the equivalent difference of matter and antimatter. In other words, the two can never occupy the same space. You cannot have a Second Amendment that is actually honored and an ATF because the two are diametrically opposed. It's like trying to, it's like trying to make a, a magnet work from both sides. It doesn't. From both polarities. It doesn't. Those polarities will never meet. They'll never stick together. They'll always push each other apart. But the Obama budget is laying the groundwork for a new universal gun registry that the Senate has rejected out and out repeatedly There are already prohibitions against a registry being developed that are already in the law. But that doesn't mean anything to Eric Holder and Barack Hussein Obama. It doesn't mean anything to the secretary of the ATF. This is the same secretary of the ATF, by the way, who is involved and has substantially supported the operations that have gone on in this country, which have been an embarrassment to us as a, as a nation, and the cause of death of untold numbers of individuals. No, he was not the secretary of the ATF at the time that uh, Fast and Furious happened. 
But he was working for the ATF, and he was a part of the organization. And, you know, the list of bungling programs that the ATF has put on, you, you know, in law enforcement circles, the ATF is known as F-Troop. If you don't know that, go ask somebody in federal law enforcement, what's the nickname for the ATF? They'll tell you it's F-Troop. Remember F-Troop? You know, Corporal Agarn with the hat on, and, you know, they were, they were, you know, the keystone cops of the cowboy days. Well, that's essentially the ATF's reputation in law enforcement. They're heavy-handed. They are out of control. They are relentless. And they are lawless. And they just banned the import of, the, uh, of a new, uh, not a new, but an a, a, a ammunition that goes by the nomenclature of 5.45 by 39. Now, they're classifying it as bullet, uh, as uh, um, armor piercing. And that's the explanation they're using to uh, ban it. It's not, by the way. The 5.45 by 39 is an Eastern uh, European weapon uh, round. And for those of you that are not into the gun thing, let me just help you grasp the concept here. The Kalashnikov or the AK-47 you've heard about and our, what we would call a 7.62 or a 308 are similar in size and the bullet's a 30 caliber bullet, which means it's, you know, 0.3 inches of, 0.3, I'm sorry, 0.30 of an inch, right? A third of an inch. And they have a lot of powder behind them so they can go a long way and they have a lot of kinetic energy when they, ran, when they land. Then our military uses something called the 5.56 five, or what's called the 2.23, which is 0.223 of an inch, right? 5.56 millimeters equates 0.223 inches. It's the old imperial uh, metric conversion. In Europe, they have the 5.45 by 39, which is their answer to the 223 or the 556 that the United States uses in every AR-15, M16, blah, 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 blah. Last Friday, Eric Holder testified before a House Appropriations Subcommittee on behalf of his department's proposed budget for 2015. Now, this is a man who, quite frankly, should be in prison, not testifying about the the magnificence of this budget he's put together. And I, apparently he did not think that anybody was actually going to read his written submissions. They thought they were only going to go by his verbal testimony, right? Well, here's the interesting aspect. He asked Congress in this uh, uh, request for, um, a, for an appropriation on his budget to implement a universal gun registry which the president would create via executive fiat, executive order. That won't happen, you keep saying. Well, we never thought any of these other assaults were going to be on weapons either, but let me tell you something. What you don't realize is that they are, they are going about it, and I'll explain to you how as we get a little further into this subject this morning. He is intending to implement a universal gun registry by executive fiat that Congress has already said no to repeatedly. Repeatedly. He's also pushing this smart gun agenda that says every gun has to have a bracelet that's tied to it so that if you're wearing the bracelet, you can use the gun. If you don't have the bracelet on, you can't use the gun. And it, the claim, of course, is that under the smart gun technology, you know, no one would be able to steal a gun or buy a gun on the street unless they bought the gun and the bracelet together and blah, 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 blah. Well, first of all, there has been a New Jersey Institute of Technology uh, study and a test done on the smart gun technology that shows that, one, it only works about 80 percent of the time. That's the first problem with it. The second problem with it is that immediately the technology will be hacked. I mean, guys, they can clone your cell phone in 30 seconds flat from the time that, it, that, that, that it's initially introduced to the marketplace. You know, how long do you think it's going to take them to reverse engineer the concept of how you can program your own bracelet to go with the gun that you just bought? 
It's a stupid idea. It's not a smart gun. It's a stupid idea. Even cops, by the way, have rejected this whole concept. You know, the argument they were given was, well, if you have a smart gun and somebody gets your weapon away from you, they won't be able to use it against you. Let me tell you something. Look up the statistical numbers of guns that have been taken from cops and then used on them. They're so insignificant, ladies and gentlemen, they don't even move the radar knob. Not to mention the fact that the technology, while it's been tested or, or investigated, doesn't actually exist. So what are we going to do? Say nobody can buy a gun until some you know, entrepreneurial scientist comes up with the smart gun technology that actually works? And who's going to pay for it all? I mean, what's the cost associated to now tying that gun to a bracelet? What about all the existing guns out there? What are you going to do, force everybody to retrofit them? Oh, I get it. You don't want to retrofit them. You just want everybody to turn in the old ones. No thanks. There was one gun that hit the market very briefly. It was called an Armatix 22 caliber. But the outrage from the public, I mean, got the thing pulled off the shelves so fast, you can't even find one. They're probably a collector's item right now. Well, here's the deal. His budget for this year shows that the administration is tr trying to quietly create an infrastructure for a universal gun registry. What they're doing is they're asking for program increases, and here's how they're going to do this. Holder said this, this program enhancement, and hear the, hear the phrase now and use your critical thinking skills, this program enhancement will double the capacity of the existing NICS, which is the National Information uh, or Instant Check System, this program enhancement will double the capacity of the existing NICS system. These expansions are vital to ensuring that the NICS system can support a universal background check requirement, which is expected to double the gross NICS transactions necessary. Well, that makes sense, you say. Hold on right there. Stop. What he doesn't mention, and you should know, is that the, even the Democratic Senate rejected and defeated the last attempt they made to pass a universal background check system. So he's trying to get funding for a project that doesn't exist, has been unconditionally said, uh, just, uh, prohibited by federal government, and by his own Democratic senators. So in effect, here's the deal. He's asking for $100 million, $100 million, and 524 new personnel, brand new people. This is mission creep, folks. 524 people and $100 million to implement a program which is illegal. It's illegal. It gets worse. Since he has been prohibited from implementing a way in which he can force everyone to register their weapons through the universal background system that doesn't exist and number two has been made illegal, he's seeking to hire 255 brand new agents at a cost of $51.5 million to go out there and make photocopies of every form that gun dealers have in their facilities. Now, for those of you that have never bought a gun, when you go into a buy a gun from any gun dealer, the federal law requires that you fill out a form 4473. Basically, it asks for your name and your, all your personal information, your name, your address, your social security number, your date of birth, and all of this information. You have to check off a bunch of these boxes. No, I'm not a drug addict. No, I've never been met, declared mentally incompetent. No, I don't have any, you know, I don't have any criminal background, blah, 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 blah. Then you sign it and you date it. Then the gun dealer takes this and he goes and makes a phone call to the NICS system and he says, okay, I got Bob Smith here. His phone number is 12345. His social security number is 678910. And he lives at 123 Main Street. And his, uh, you know, here's all his personal information. Someone on the other end of the phone line plugs that information into the system, or they do it electronically now. And basically, they, 
do a quick background check on you and say, okay, this guy hasn't been arrested for anything. He's not a felon. He's not, uh, you know, on a, an escapee from a mental institution. We don't have any records that he's been uh, secured in a mental institution. He's cleared to buy a gun. And they give the dealer a control number. The control number goes, gets written in on the form. And then the form gets held and filed by the gun dealer forevermore. He can never get rid of those forms. He must hold them in his possession forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Or until he gives up his gun dealer's license, the federal firearms license he's been issued by the ATF, at which point he has two options. Or no, he has one option. He has to turn in his log books. The log books, this is the book that says, I bought a gun from XYZ Distributing. And the serial number is, and it's model number X, and its serial number is 1234, and I got it in on this date. And then on this date, I sold it to Joe Smith, and here's the information on Joe Smith. And then that is connected and correlated, including the control number, back to the 4473 form. Okay? Now, the dealer held, holds on to these 4473 records indefinitely. And at the end of the, you know, if, the, if they go out of business or closes the, the business down or, or turns his license in and says, I'm retiring, whatever the case may be, they're then required to turn those logbooks over to the ATF. And they're now required to send in the 4473 forms. But you got to realize that there are probably a couple of hundred million of those forms that are already out in the world right now that the ATF does not have. And that has all the information they need to know who's got what and what they bought. Because on the back of the form, the dealer, after he sells you the gun, is required to put down the name and the serial number, the model of the weapon, and the serial number of it, and the date he sold it to you. So if you've gone in and you've bought 10 guns over the course of five years or 15 years, it doesn't make any difference, the dealer has got all of those records. So the ATF is hiring, according to Eric Holder, at the cost of $51.1 million, and I apologize, I gave you the 51.5 before, but it's $51.1 million, hiring 255 new agents and other personnel for enforcement and inspections. And here's what they're doing. These people are going around to all of the gun dealers, and they are copying all of the 4473s, the forms, and the bound book entries. And they're taking these 4473s and the bound book entries, and they're manually creating a database, which, by the way, under federal law, they are prohibited from doing anyway. Now, they say, well, we're really not doing this. We're not creating a, a database. If you believe that, I've got, you know, oceanfront property in the middle of Arizona to sell you. They're physically copying the 4473s and the bound book. That means that they've got a record of every gun that's ever been sold since 1968. Hello? There are, by the way, on Gun, gun Owners of America's website, there are dozens of firsthand gun dealer accounts of this happening. So if you if you disbelieve what they're attempting to do, you can go to gunownersofamerica.org and you can read it for yourself. Then, of course, recognize that under Holder's plan for everybody to get a universal background check, that means that the gun dealers are now going to have an entire influx of brand new 4473s and logbook entries because if you can't go in and buy a gun from your neighbor, let's say you and your buddy who lives next door to you, he's got a shotgun, his kid is outgrown, and he says, well, you know, you got a younger son, and, you know, you want to go turkey hunting, so here, I'll sell you little Bobby's shotgun, because little Bobby's not little anymore, and you can give it to little Joey. Now you would have to, right now, it depends on what state you live in, but right now in, in the state, in most states in the country, you could just do it. You give him 50 bucks, and he hands you the gun, and boom, you're good. They want you to have to go down to a gun dealer and bring the gun down. And your neighbor has to come down and give it, you know, put it down in the logbook as he transferred it to the dealer. Then the dealer did a 4473 background check on you, and then he has to log the gun out as having been sold to you. And, of course, there will be a fee associated with it. That will give them 
a consistent record of every gun sold, not just those sold since 1968 through gun dealers, but all guns sold privately, personally, otherwise. So under the new proposed budget, there will be an enormous stack of new 4473s and all these people to go out there and track them. Now, let's go back to the background thing. You see, under the illegal universal background check system, every gun that sold would have to be transferred through a dealer, right? What is the first step to confiscation of weapons is knowing who's got what. That's the goal. Here's the problem. <clears throat> And this is the way that um, Larry Pratt puts it in this argument from Gun Owners of America. Think about it. With Republicans expected to take the Senate back this fall, and o which will naturally mean Obama will be stymied legislatively, he has every incentive to go full tyrant. In other words, meaning he will pass executive orders in a, in a mountain and that apparently is exactly what he intends to do. Now, they also declared the 545 by 39 ammo as armor piercing, and they've outlawed it. This, ladies and gentlemen, is another lawless decree by the secretary of the ATF, who in the examples I gave you in earlier segments of today's show, I said to you, these people in all of these administrative agencies are not elected, they're not accountable. The ATF, the secretary of the ATF says, by my decree as the secretary of the ATF, that ammunition is illegal. And guess what? There's nothing you or I can say and do about it. Nothing. It's out of our hands. You know why? Because he's not accountable to us. He was never elected. He's appointed. He's appointed. And we have no recourse. We can't, I mean, I suppose you could maybe file a lawsuit have you got the ten or twenty or thirty thousand dollars it's going to take you to get through federal court, only to have every justice between here and the Supreme Court deny you because they give them deference? Ladies and gentlemen, our freedoms aren't slipping away. The reason these people are after your weapons is because they intend to do you harm once you no longer have them. That's the long and the short of it. Every nation that has ever removed the weaponry from the hands of their citizens has then turned around and gone full tyrant. If you want to live under that kind of a regime and be defenseless, then that's entirely up to you. But I got to tell you something. That's not the way that this nation was designed and built. Our founders gave us the ability, the wherewithal to defend ourselves and, if necessary, take our nation back with the use of arms. That's the whole purpose of the Second Amendment. It has nothing to do with, gun, with uh, duck hunting. It has nothing to do with shooting a deer in the backyard or out in the woods. It has everything to do with your having the ability to say, we collectively, we the people, have realized that we are no longer under the consent of the governed that we are now the slaves under the masters and the rulers. And we intend to change that by violent action if necessary. That's it. Everything else is propaganda and marketing. You've been listening to America's Voice now. If you can help support this program, please do so. You can go to our website where you can make a one-time donation or you can make a pledge that, uh, that takes it out of your PayPal account every month. Um, we desperately need your help. We're always in the red. I always have to cover it out of my pocket, and it's a big, big chunk of money. Uh, I don't get paid, so you, know, you don't have to worry about somebody abusing your money. Trust me, <laughs> there ain't no extra to abuse. Uh, I pay for everything. So if you can help us and support us, please do that. Uh, I'd be forever grateful. You can uh, go to our website at americasvoicenow.org. You can simply click the PayPal link and you can uh, make a donation there. Or you can, uh, you can mail us a one-time payment or you can put us on your calendar and mail us a payment once a month. I'd be grateful forever for that. You can mail it to us at America's Voice Now. That's P.O. Box 1195, 
P.O. Box 1195, and that's in West Plains, Missouri, 65775. America's Voice Now, P.O. Box 1195, West Plains, Missouri, 65775. You can also email me at mike at americasvoicenow.org. That's mike at americasvoicenow.org. Well, also, if you want to make a donation through a couple of silver or gold coins or something like that, I'd be grateful forever. Thanks very much. We'll see you on Monday morning. TGIF, have a great weekend. God bless you. Keep your powder dry.